everybody, this is Craig Tanner for The Mindful Eye and The Daily Critique. Today's image was created by John, who is an intermediate photographer from Illinois. John shot this image in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, was going for a shot to capture the fog and create a feeling of movement on the water. Metadata that we have is 17 millimeters, ISO 100, f6.3, and 10 seconds. And we could start there, talk about this long shutter speed, shooting from the tripod, it's done a beautiful job of expressing motion on the surface of the water. A couple of things that I wanted to mention about this today. One is that when we go for a longer and longer uh, exposure on the surface of the water, areas of the water that are bubbling are going to get brighter and brighter relative to other things in the scene because this is an area of the image that's changing. The way that it's changing is that more and more of these bubbles that are very specular and very bright are showing up over time. So these areas will get brighter than they would relative to, let's say, a shorter exposure at a second. And you can use this idea on very delicate flows of water to create a very dramatic feeling of movement of water where maybe there's not much movement of water. On robust water, these real long exposures can cause these kinds of areas to totally blow out. The other thing that I want to mention, it's real basic, but it's important to know if you're a beginning photographer, is that these longer exposures on the surface of water can also help to simplify these compositions. If we shoot a fast shutter speed, I'll say a quarter of a second or faster, and we stop the implied motion of surface texture of water, there can be a lot of contrast there. It can overwhelm the other subjects in the image. The other thing that I'm really enjoying about John's image, in addition to the way he's treated the movement of the water, is the fog. He mentions that. It's really one of the main subjects of the image. And this is a really beautiful fog. I'm saying that because where you see it, you really get a sense of a very thick fog. This creating the, the feeling that the thick fog can create, a feeling of a veil being in between us and the next solid subject. And one of the things that I want to come back to in this video is, for my taste, tone curve of digital capture even on the latest cameras a lot of times diminishes the feeling of fog relative to the way it used to record on film and I want to just show you a very basic technique if you have some fog to begin with where you can increase the apparent feeling of the fog we'll do that using curves in just a second another thing that I really enjoy about John's image is it got very close to a foreground subject so with a wide angle lens I do feel like it's easy for me as the viewer to connect with the image and move in on this rock. And there's really beautiful leading line. These subjects are the trees that are down in the stream. And then the stream itself bring me back to one of the main subjects, the fog. Another thing that I like about this image is vibrancy of color. And part of the feeling of richness of color to me is coming from the fog itself. Whenever we have a real thick fog like this, particularly if we're in the mountains where it may just be low clouds, it's typically associated with mist and the surface of things become very saturated. That will increase the feeling of richness of color. And then John has two colors here. The main color design is uh, two pairs of colors that complement each other. Opposites, primary green, close to a primary red. Opposites, when it comes to color, opposite color pairs create a feeling of more vibrancy in each color. Lots of things that I enjoy about John's image. In a perfect world, one thing that I would like to change is this area right in here of the image. This left-hand corner gets real heavy for me, and I feel like that's happening for a couple of reasons. One is that everywhere else in the image, there's a lot of contrast. Lots of shape changes, uh, value changes, so on and so forth. That peters out down in here. The other thing that's true about the structure of the image is that it's generally symmetrical. It's a feeling of this rock being centered, within that a centered lichen floret, fog is sort of centered in the background, two ideas that are the same, the rhododendrons and hardwoods on either side, same thing in here, the Y shape of the water moving up, and then because this doesn't have a lot of movement, um, the feeling of symmetry falls down, so it's kind of a double whammy in the lower left hand corner, I feel like there's a lot of weight there and I'm getting pulled out there. If we're open to changing editorial content, there's all kinds of things that we could do this image. You know, we could copy our background and start working in Photoshop. We could clone in some lichen florets here or a leaf. If you were open to changing editorial content while you were there, you could reach down into the scene and drop a few leaves there. For a lot of people, that feels cliche and just doesn't feel right into the spirit of this kind of documentary photography. So without making editorial changes, rescaling, cloning, uh, moving things around while you were there, one thing that we might do here, more subtle, is just crop the image 
and make it less of a vertical. If we come up from the bottom and crop, cut down on the flatness of this space shape coming out of the corner, create more of a feeling of a spear shape that has higher energy. And we'll also just cut down on some of the negative space there. So if I double click now to apply the crop and do before and after, I do like this crop to cut down on the negative space. And then we could come in with a curves adjustment layer and just increase contrast in that part of the image. Um, just applying that locally. So let's just look at that real quick. Command delete, fill that mask with black. Let's go into luminosity blending mode, get the brush and at 10% we could paint in this area, make it darker. We could play around with making this area that's already dark a little bit darker. Create a little bit more of a movement of value. Here's the work that we just did uh, in the image to keep that part from flattening out so much and we could continue to sort of lean on that. And I think that we've come with just a couple of basic moves a pretty long way uh, in keeping that corner from having so much weight because of conceptual contrast as it did in the beginning. I told you I would show you just a real quick basic technique for making fog look like it's thicker. Let's look at that. I want to go to my adjustment layer area, get a new curves adjustment layer. I'm going to get the target adjustment tool here and just see where the fog is to begin with. It's right up in here. I'm going to brighten it ever so slightly, but I'm going to come behind that point and then pull up. And now what I'm doing is I'm lowering the contrast. Fill the mask with black. Get my brush tool by hitting the B key. And let's go to a real low opacity. I'm going to hit 05 real quick for 5% opacity. And now I could paint in the areas where I wanted to increase the apparent feeling of fog and if I turn the eyeball on and off I'm not just making brighter I'm lowering contrast which is creating the illusion that in fact there is more of the fog in between like a veil myself and the next solid subject. So just wanted to show you that idea for increasing the feeling of the thickness of apparent fog one other thing that I might do to this image, going back to my adjustment layers, is come into selective color and get rid of a little bit of the warmth in the green back here to create a little bit more color vibrancy from near to far. A lot of the warm is down in here in the image and then cool in the background. I might want to create more of a feeling of back and forth with warm and cool. When I go to selective color, I'm not going to go to greens. There's an enormous amount of yellow and greens. I'm actually going to go to yellows to do this work. And I'm going to pull on this ladder right here. I'm going to add cyan, which will get rid of red that is in the yellows that are in the green. And if I turn the eyeball on and off, you can really see the warmth coming out of the green. Back to layers. Fill the mask with black. B for the brush tool. Let's go to 20%. And now if we paint back in here in the background, we'll get rid of some of that warmth in the green. Turn the eyeball on and off. Create a little bit more of a feeling of back and forth terms of color movement. Uh, let's go right back here to John's original submission, which is absolutely fantastic. Beautiful image, um, beautiful use of long shutter speed, beautiful quality of light, really well framed. Big thank you to John. Big thank you to you for being here. I hope to see you again real soon on the Mindful Eye.